Hello, welcome back. Welcome to my art studio this morning where I'll be showing you and talking about how I put my grisaille layer on my canvas. In a previous video I made called preparing the canvas for grisaille oil painting and I'll put that link in the description. I show you how I did the uh, portrait ink portrait drawing on the canvas in Indian ink and then I glazed it with a, a mixture of oil uh, trans transparent oil paint and uh, mixed with turps and uh, a little bit of Dama varnish. As you can see I have been working in this painting for a while in the grisaille and I've, I've already completed about two-thirds of it Now you can carefully do all, model all the details and you get a chance to deepen the shadows and highlight the highlights. And, th and this allows you to kind of uh, sharpen your, your um, painting, fine lines, small details, um, textures. And, uh, and it's a really good time to like really um, go over your work and make any changes if you if your underdrawing was missing something or you wanted to add something you can still add change it and add it at this stage A very basic form of grisaille is of course you just continue over your work completing it and covering all the painting in a, a, a range of um, dark blacks to lights and all the greys in between. That's the very basic stage, very basic uh, grisaille. But there is other higher, higher advanced techniques and I won't pretend to know all of them. I learn, I'm learning on the way but I, I do know, and I've seen in a lot of studied a lot of artwork, that there is a trick or to bring out the most in the grisaille, and uh, the most in the grisaille by using that toned underpainting and bring it into your final artwork. So that um, under the under layer on top of your ink drawing, the the, the, the coloured tone in the earth colours that you use is is important. That sets the uh, depending on what type of uh, earth colour it is, whether it's a very cool greenish umber, uh, a terracotta, uh, uh, a terracotta, a terra verde, or a, a sap green or, or, or combination of viridians, or a very warm one like a um, uh, a burnt sienna or raw, raw sienna or ochre is that that sets the that sets the warmth or coolness of your shadows I only know a, a small amount of grisaille painting, um, but I know I know that in the, the old masters would use this this un, this this toned under un, underpainting, and what they do is they would paint the 
the, the light the lightest parts of the painting would be done in a very uh, white opaque paint and then they would put glaze on brilliant colors on top of it but the shadows and darks the the, the mid tones the dark mid mid grays and everything in the sh in in the painting would be left um, luminous meaning they would it, they would leave that in, in transparencies all the way that the light would travel all the way through their transparencies to that bottom layer to the canvas and the light would bounce back making their shadows instead of a flat black or brown or whatever color it would have it would it would have a like a, it would shine with like an inner light and that would th and that inner light is an optical illusion which we, which is made available by this technique And I've, I've learned to employ a little bit of this knowledge that I know in, in some of my paintings, um, particularly in my paintings of the turbulent skies where I've painted clouds and you can see parts of blue skies and you see the high white clouds and then the darkest clouds are a deep uh, a charcoal and like in between the in the shadows I have left uh, parts of that underpainting I did in, in a, a raw sienna a burnt sienna I mean and it, I, I've, let, I've let it show through and this gives an um, it gives an, an, an optical illusion of a, a luminosity to, to the shadows in my work as you can see here I'm also learning to do this in my portraits as well. Uh, I'm beginning portraits where I, where I do the underpainting, uh, the tones depending on the person's skin colour can have a different tone that suits complements them the most. Um, so on the, on on a lot of uh, portraits, where the light hits the side of the face, it will be opaque colours, intense colours, or very pale colours depending on the person but they will be opaque and as they model it, the face features around to the shadows under the neck and the eyes I will leave as much as the background in there and glaze, softly glaze uh, colours into it that, that leave the, um, the shadows looking you know like they like they have a depth like a, a jewel like depth to it Whenever I get a chance, or whenever you get a chance, you should really go to museums or national galleries where you get a chance to go in and look at those old master paintings and you can study and, and often you with some of those paintings the large you can see parts where their background is showing through and you can see the colours they used on those backgrounds and then if you study you see how they they chose to leave parts of their painting um, just just gla thinly glazed uh, the background is almost coming through and other parts is very heavily painted over and this works to create that optical illusion <laughs> 